what happened in Bahrain during the past year and a half. Because a lot of time Bahrain is overlooked due to its uh, size, uh, small size population uh, and very small country. Bahrain has a population of citizens of about 600 to 700,000 people only. Um, in many countries, that's the size of a small town. But if you look at Bahrain per capita, Bahrain um, started their revolution on the 14th of February 2011. Now since then, every single day there's been a protest. It didn't end with the crackdown which was uh, helped or assisted by the GCC forces entering the country. People continue to go out and protest. They continue to demand uh, democracy and justice and freedom. Per capita, if we look at the situation in Bahrain, and I would like to compare it a little to Egypt, because so many people are usually familiar with Egypt. Bahrain had up to 100 deaths due to the protest movement. People were killed. If we were looking, or if we were comparing it per capita to Egypt, that would equal to more than 11,000 people dead today. The largest protest in Bahrain was of about 200, 300 to 400,000 people. That's like saying 40 million Egyptians came out on the streets in a protest. Now, like I said, again, when you look at the situation in Bahrain, and because of the numbers, it seems like it's a very small issue, like it's minor, like it can be overlooked. But the fact of the matter is, is that more than half the population of a country came out to demand change, and they were beaten down by their own government. Thousands of people have been imprisoned. Thousands of people have been systematically tortured, physically, psychologically, and sexually. Thousands of people lost their jobs. Imagine if you logged into your Facebook page and liked a picture, and the next day you receive a letter that you no longer have a job to feed your family because you liked the picture on Facebook. The gravity of the human rights violations in Bahrain is very extreme, and it's getting worse. We have, like I said, protests every single day. But the amount of crackdown, targeting, harassment, imprisonment, beatings on the street is increasing, not decreasing. One thing I would like to point to is the role of women in the revolution in Bahrain. Now, every time I travel and I go to conferences where people speak about human rights, they always speak about women's rights as if it's something separate. I don't believe that women's rights is separate from human rights. They go hand in hand. When you're fighting... for human rights, you are automatically fighting for women's rights as well. One of the things that inspired me from the Bahraini Revolution is a video that not only spoke to the importance of the role that women played within the revolution, but it also broke down so many stereotypes that exist in the Western world, and I know this because I grew up in Denmark. And there was a video of a woman who comes out in the traditional Bahraini dress. She's wearing an abaya, she's wearing a scarf, completely covered. And in the eye of many people that I grew up with in Denmark, she would be oppressed. She would be someone who's controlled by her husband, a woman who has absolutely no self-will. She starts writing graffiti on the wall. And when she is done, what she has written says, even if the men stop, the woman will continue. And that was beautiful. I've always said that when you want to understand the human rights situation of any country, look at where their human rights defenders are. In Bahrain, the most prominent human rights defenders today sit in prison. Abdul Hadi al Khawaja, Nabir Rajab, Abdul Jalil al Singhis, Zainab al Khawaja has been in and out of prison, Sayyid Yusuf al Mahavla has been in and out of prison, Hamad al Masqati has been in and out of prison. And that's the reality we live in Bahrain, is that if your job is to criticize the government in regards to human rights violations, if it is your job to document and report on human rights violations in the country, then your place is in prison. And that's why today I would like to honor the president of our center, the Bahrain Center for Human Rights, Nabi Rajab. He is a man who tirelessly defended the rights of people. Last year, under the most severest times of crackdown, he stood out and said, I will continue to do uh, interviews internationally. I will continue 
to document human rights violations, and I will continue to speak out regardless. And I think this brings me to my next point, that the situation in the countries where you saw massive uprising, it's not that people are no longer afraid. Fear exists because the consequences are very real. The torture is very real. The killing is very real. So it's not the, the inexistence of fear. It's rather that people have decided to tread on their fear, to go out despite their fear. And I think that's what we should honor them for. One of the things that I would like to also speak about very quickly is the Western or the international role towards the situation in Bahrain. When I became a human rights defender, I was about 22 or 23 years old. And I went in with this romanticized, beautified uh, vision of what the system that had been set up internationally to protect human rights was. Now at the age of 25, I know better. I know that there is no such thing as an international system that protects human rights and human rights defenders wherever it may be. I learned that... I learned that even in institutions like the United Nations and the Human Rights Council that were meant to uphold human rights around the world, your value as a human being comes in the sense of what passport you carry. And if you carry a Bahraini passport, you have no value. I have also learned that the very same countries that say that they hold human rights and democracy as the height of their values and principles are willing to overlook those values and principles for their own interests. The United States and the United Kingdom and France and other countries which have very rightfully so criticized Russia for their involvement in Syria and the crimes that have happened in Syria do they use the exact same use that Russia uses for Syria in Bahrain. And I, but the only difference is The difference is, is that we all know what Russia is. Russia does not pretend to be a beacon of human rights and democracy around the world. The United States and the UK do, and we should hold them up, to the, up for that. <laughs> the Bahraini people have pledged upon themselves to continue, no matter what the costs are. They, have been, they feel like they've been completely ignored and sidelined internationally. But they have decided to continue because they believe in the idea of no government can outlast its people. Um, so they, they have continued to go on and to demand and to protest every day, despite not being covered by the media, despite not receiving the same kind of recognition or support internationally. But despite all of the negativeness in my speech, I'd like to end on a positive note. My family went to visit my father in prison one day and they were very upset and depressed because of the situation in Bahrain and the lack of international regard for the situation. And my father asked them why they were upset and they explained to him. And he told them something that until today inspires me. He said to them, your attitude is wrong. Because the initial victory of the mass uprisings in the Middle East and North Africa region, the initial victory is not regime change. It's not creating the reforms. It's the fact that masses of people tread upon their fears and went out to demand those things. And you should be celebrating that. That should be your attitude today. And in the light of that, I would like to stand here today not to honor only the Bahraini people, but all of the people who fight and struggle for justice and democracy and freedom. I stand in here to honor the people in Iran who struggle for freedom. The people of Tunisia, the people of Libya, the people of Egypt, the people of Syria, the people of Yemen, and the people of Bahrain. These are people who decided that against all odds, they were going to go out and demand change for the better good. Thank you very much.